Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Burner. You're closing out the Santa Anita Saturday card with race number 10. We're going down the hill at about six and a half furlongs. It's the Wishing Well Stakes for Phillies and Mares. Our preview is presented by DRF Bets. Please sign up for a DRF Bets account. Please accept $200 free bet, no deposit required at drf.com forward slash join. You use the promo code FREEBET09. Let's take a look at these Phillies and Mares heading down the hill at about six and a half furlongs. And Matt, the number five Samba Inc., a champion in her native Argentina, blinkers on, Lasix on, perhaps most importantly, Bob Baffert on. There's been a lot of buzz about this horse as she prepares for her North American debut. If, if you believe the buzz, she's going to be really tough in here and that maybe this is the start of something good. You know, she's been bought by Judd Munt. She's been transferred over to Baffert. We haven't seen her since May of last year when she was winning a group one down in Argentina by the length of the stretch, and she never got out of first gear doing so. It was over heavy ground at a mile, but... I mean, there are so many things when you just look at this horse, you say, you know what, she's probably just going to be better than these girls. But uh, until they do it, you don't really know. For for me, I was a little bit curious to see how Baffert does with foreign shippers with the first time after the trainer switch for the past three years. Uh, all he is is three for five with the 612 ROI. I know it's a small sample size, but I, I don't really have any knocks against this horse. You have to YouTube that last race from Argentina, Group 1 going a mile over heavy ground, and she showed good speed from the inside, rated comfortably on the lead, and she never was really asked for run in the stretch, lengthening away in professional style, and Baffert has already been quoted as saying she's got a big amount of speed and potential. I like that Baffert's not throwing her to the wolves first time off the layoff. He found this nice little restricted stakes. If she's what she was in Argentina, she's probably going to win, but... I agree with you. I think this horse is going to get pounded at the windows, and I'm really not sure I'm, I'm in love with taking a horse like this off of a long, long layoff, but she's kind of a must-use in any exotic. Yeah, certainly. I, mean, I think from, a, from an individual win standpoint, she's the kind of horse that I'm willing to take a shot against, but if you're playing any kind of a pick, if you're playing in anything really as far as an exotic wager is concerned, I can't imagine her running a clunker. I think she's the most likely winner of the race, but uh, at, at too short a price, uh, I want her to just prove to me that she is every bit as good as everybody's made her out to be. Bendable, the number four, is no slouch for Richard Mandela. This mare is a graded stakes winner on the dirt. She most recently made her turf debut going down the hill in the Las Cienegas, and she had the misfortune to catch the red-hot Konaya, who came right back the other day, ran second on dirt in the Las Flores with a 99 buyer, and Konaya was pretty much able to control the Las Cienegas on the lead. I thought all in all, Bendable had a good trip. It was nice to see her rally in the lane, and if Samba Inc. stubs her toe, a lot of folks are going to argue that this is the most likely winner. She might be, you know, I don't know why I've never really loved Bendable, but I mean, it, it's just one of those things. I thought that run in the La Cienegas was very, very good, uh, considering it was the first time on turf. You look at the pedigree, there's a little bit of turf, but, you know, we immediately just, at least I do, I associate her with clearly now her older brother, and she just never quite got there on dirt. I know she is a great stakes winner on the dirt, but it just never seemed like she took that next step. She's fine in here. I just, she's another one, though, as the alternative to me. She's just kind of uh, nondescript. We're going to throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, but we should warn everybody that we're lacking pace data, obviously, for the South American runner and morning line favorite Samba Inc. Samba Inc. has big speed. I wouldn't be surprised if she's either outright on the lead or pressing the number three Kuyathi, a long shot that time form U.S. has in front. As for Kuyathi, her form's okay, but she's kind of taking a little bit of a step up. Yeah, she certainly is. From a speed figure standpoint, I know that two by, she had that 89 buyer, but that was on dirt. And I just so far, based on what she's done on turf, uh, she's in way, way over her head. She was fast enough to press the much improved and quick sell court last time on dirt. So there's no surprise that she's out there on the lead in the pace projector. And who knows? We've seen horses get brave before. Princess Princess, the number one, is slowly rounding into form for trainer Richard Baltus. This is her third start of the form cycle. She finished behind Bendable last time out, sort of trapped the pace and inside post here maybe not ideal going down the hill but she can be closer I think than mid pack where time form has her she's adaptable yeah she's adaptable I think she's a nice filly I think the thing about her at this point she's a mare actually uh, I have a hard time when at a 22 lifetime start you've run second or third nine times you've only won twice 
to me, if you're going to use her, underneath is the place. The number two is Miss Southern Miss, and I think the DeZormo boys have found out what Miss Southern Miss wants, and that's going down the hill at six and a half. I think she overcame a kind of moderate pace scenario last time out to beat non-winners of two other than foes. She earned a career best 89 buyer speed figure for that effort. She's fairly lightly raised. I think uh, uh, an upward move is not out of the question. I'm just not sure. She, to me, is the kind of filly where you give her pace, she'll roll. I think the pace will be fair, not sensational. I I like her underneath only. Yeah, I think that could be the thing that may compromise her. If this heat, if this pace doesn't heat up enough, where she is going to come from the back of the pack, if it doesn't go fast enough early on, she may be up against it. I agree with you though. It kind of feels like this is finally the aha moment. The light bulb has gone on. They realize that this is what she wants to do: go down the hill. Barbara Beatrice likes to go down the hill as well, and I wonder if she's coming into her best form for trainer Phil D'Amato. Here's the formulator fact for the nine, Barbara Beatrice. Past three years, older turf sprinters going second off the bench, 32%, $3 return on investment. This one came with an okay run last time. And again, a race where I didn't think there was a ton of pace in the Sunshine Millions Philly and Mare turf sprint. She was picking up some horses late in her first start off of a mini layoff, but it looks like she's plateaued at sort of the mid-80s buyer standpoint, and I think a 90 is going to win this race. That was my big knock. I, I think she's honest. I know that she likes to go down the hill and she looks like she's coming up to a career best effort. The problem is through 17 starts, it just feels like that sort of 85, 86 is what you're going to get. Unfortunately for her and the connections, an 86 isn't going to be fast enough to win. Algorithmic was claimed for $32,000 in March of last year, and all she did for the new connections was reel off four in a row going down the hill, a couple of fast races, and then she disappeared after the 4th of July. She really loves going down the hill, but she's stepping up in class off of a long layoff. What I do like about her is, if she's keen off the layoff, Joe Talamo has options. He could send this mare and get her in a good spot as they cross the dirt patch. You know, one of the interesting things about her, you, you had said this to me a long, long time ago. You don't just put horses away that are winning races. Yeah. They don't just go away for no reason. Something had to go wrong because she was in raging form. But there's also the part of me, I look, Mike Mikowski had turned her in a big, big way. She was already nice going down the hill, but he made her really, really something. Boy, did they handle her with kid gloves. They went through every single condition that you could possibly have. And now off this long layoff, this is the spot where you choose to try to come back with. I, I think she's good, but I want her to prove to me that she's what she was before she took that long break. Mongolian Chopper on the far outside. All she's done since shipping to Southern California is win two races going down the hill, but one was for 50 where she kind of got away with a real easy lead. And last time out, she also had a, a comfortable trip on the lead against a weak group of non-winners of one other than this is the acid test. Certainly is. I mean, look, it's hard for me to sit here and knock a horse that's two for two going down the We know that this is a horse for course trip going half down the hillside turf course, but at the same time, from a speed figure standpoint, she's too slow. What about gliding by the seven for Bayerano and Baltus, cutting all the way back after a fourth place finish in the grade three, Bobby Frankel going a mile and an eighth. That race produced next out 96 graded stakes winner, LEC's World. All three of her wins have come around one turn. I kind of like the cutback here. If there's hitting up front, maybe she can pick up some pieces at a nice price. Yeah, you know what, the thing with her is anyway, I wonder if she's just been crying out to get back to a turf sprint. I mean, four starts back, that was her most recent victory. That was going seven-eighths of a mile on the turf at Woodbine. And I know it wasn't a great field that she beat that day, but she did it pretty convincingly. Um, I think at a bigger number, she might be one to use underneath as well. We both respect the Baffert train runner. We're both going to use her in any kind of multiple race wager. This race, of course, uh, completes the card at Santa Anita on Saturday. But we're looking at some better priced alternatives to win as we throw up our selections for the Wishing Well Stakes. You like Malibu Stacy, And Malibu Stacy, the last time she ran on the lawn was in the grade two gold of Cove, And she was kind of really the only part of the pace to hang around for a piece. To me, I, I know it sounds a little bit odd to say this, but I think if she runs the Gold of Kova, she's got a giant chance in here, and I know it's a different configuration at a different racetrack, but she was the only part of the pace that stuck around, even with that pace being a little bit on the softer side. It's not like they were going guns blazing, but at the same time, I feel like that Kalukan Queen was nothing more than let's get a race into her. She really has proven that dirt, eh, she's okay, but she's nothing spectacular. Her best races have been on the turf. I think this slightly shorter distance is going to be beneficial for her as well. She can go to the lead. She can sit just off. If, let's say, Mongolian Shopper wants to go or let's say someone else wants to go, if she sits that sort of catbird trip two or three path waiting to let these horses go, I, I think she's got a big chance in here. Ew, look, maybe Samba Inc. is just a freak. And she's going to be every bit that everyone has made her out to be. I don't want to find out that she's not and then completely miss the boat on a horse that I kind of feel like this is probably what Malibu Stacy's wanted all along. 
Maybe Anita Partner can't run anymore, and her last race is just an indicator that it's all over for her. But hear me out. She's 20 to 1 on the morning line. She's done good work down the hill. She ran third in the Monrovia in May going down the hill against Illuminant, who is a legitimate grade one force uh, on the West Coast during her career, and Konaya, who we have already discussed in this video. After that, I think her form might be dirtied up a little bit. She ran a couple of times at Del Mar, and I'm really not sure those races really fit her from a distance or course standpoint. And in that last Senegas, it was a long, long layoff. There wasn't a lot of pace. Tyler Bays just kept her buried inside till they turned into the stretch and then just let her roll a little bit the final quarter mile. I wonder if that was nothing more than a tightener to get her back for this race. She has that race under her belt, several workouts leading up to this race. Now I need a barbecue up front. Maybe she's not good enough to win this, but I wouldn't be surprised if Anita Partner comes rolling along to at least get a healthy helping of the wishing well. Yeah, I, I picked her in the Las Cienegas, and it was just one of those things where I'm watching and waiting for that sort of big kick that I'm accustomed to from her going down the hill, and it just, for one reason or another, didn't really come with the full, full-blown full effect of it. Uh, she did have a little bit of traffic at the top of the lane. If she can get back to the Monrovia, the Monrovia makes her not just a player, but arguably one of the horses to beat in here, a 92 buyer, or a 95, excuse me, I think that's probably pretty darn close to what it'll take to win this race. I don't think she's without a chance in here. You throw her out if you want. That's entirely up to you. But to me, she's the kind of horse that you know on her best day can win, which is more than I can say about some of these other girls. On their best day, I'm not sure that's even good enough. With Anita Partner, if she runs her best, she can win this race. Matt's going to go with the eight, Malibu Stacy. I'll go with the six, Anita Partner, and pick fours, pick whatevers. The five and the six are my A's. The four and the eight are are my bees. Again, if you're playing the Santa Anita Saturday card from home, please consider DRF Bet's $200 free bet. No deposit required is there for the taking. DRF.com forward slash join. Please use the promo code freebet09 at approximate post time for the wishing well. Five o'clock Pacific. Best of luck.